So this is just to give an illustration of how diverse we are, the richness of a multicultural environment in which our students and staff find themselves. Our students come from over 130 countries. The major source countries are Malaysia, Hong Kong and China, which have combined are now the major single source country, which you can see, although we often think of it, the international student market being dominated by students from China, it's much more diverse than that. And you can see the, uh, the smaller segments that you won't be able to identify specifically, but um, altogether it's an incredibly diverse uh, community. And I'm pleased to say a very successful example of a harmonious multicultural community. The, the clicker doesn't seem to work particularly well if you just uh, advance it. Thanks. Now, why do we have the international campuses? Well, I think it gives us an opportunity for real international engagement and perspective that partnerships and twinning arrangements can never do. It gives us an opportunity to embed ourselves in a country and to form relationships with business and industry, other universities and with governments in those countries that you can never do from several thousand kilometres away. It should allow student mobility and experience with uh, international study opportunity for different phases of education. I think the popularity of a global BA shows that if we frame this properly and market it properly, it's extremely attractive to students. So the global BA, for example, has an entry uh, requirement in relation to enter but substantially higher than undifferentiated BA, even though with undifferentiated BA you could do all the things that are offered through the global BA. So students want this, it appeals to them, but if they're embedded in a course and doing a course, the idea of then uprooting themselves and going somewhere else at the time is not quite so attractive. But if we get the picture right and say what it's about and market them that way, then it is attractive. We should be doing that much more widely. It allows research on global issues to be conducted on a global basis. So to have a node of our Sustainability Institute, for example, including water and energy, based in South Africa, where they've got very successful coal to liquid technologies for gas already operating on commercial level, but also huge problems in terms of sustainability, public health, global movements, security, regulatory affairs, all these issues are global issues. And to get a global perspective, all through Monash research institutes operating in these different environments can really give a power that you just can't have by operating in an isolated backwater, which Australia is, whether we like to think of it that way or not, operating in that environment alone. <coughs> and it establishes visibility and reputation if done properly. Now, if done badly or half-heartedly, it does immense damage to the reputation. <coughs> and the bond experience in Africa, or the University of New South Wales in Singapore, shows that it's a fragile type of relationship that has to be really entered to, into with vigour, and you can't be half-hearted about it. Once you make the decision to commit to these type of operations, you've got to say, we're in there for the long haul, we're going to commit to it, we're going to hang in there. So when I came here and found all the ambivalence around South Africa, for example, of a whole international strategy, you know, it's just either we said out, take the huge reputational risk or total commitment. And we decided total commitment and uh, it's wonderful to see that the university has got on board with that and it's also even more wonderful to see the way in which those uh, international campuses have thrived since then. So just a couple of words about where we're up to with the two international campuses and the two centres. One is University Malaysia is growing steadily. We now have 3,100 students. Medicine has started there and very significantly it was accredited by the Australian Medical Council. The first time the Australian Medical Council has accredited a medical school outside Australia and New Zealand. And not only did it accredit it, but gave it glowing praise and said that the new medical schools being established in Australia weren't of the same quality or standard. I mean, this was, they didn't say this in the report. And, just sort of vote a comment to me that probably shouldn't be quoted, but it was uh, really uh, setting the standard uh, and that the new medical schools uh, here weren't uh, able to replicate them. The new campus is opening uh, in second semester 
already the half of that campus is open and the medical school is operating in the new campus. It's a wonderful new campus which is going to transform the university there. It offers the opportunity for two-way exchanges of staff and students. There's been quite a lot of exchange of staff and some limited exchange of students, but again, not nearly as much as we should have to take full advantage of it. It's building invaluable links with Southeast Asia, and certainly um, it's very well known now in Malaysia and uh, very well regarded by the universities there, and it's a wonderful jumping off point for uh, substantial relationships with the leading universities um, in Malaysia and Indonesia and elsewhere. We have a business partner. It's not a financial risk for us, and it's been returning a small royalty stream to Monash in Australia, uh, which covers the real cost, but certainly doesn't make money, but it's uh, not a net cost and the benefit uh, we think uh, well and truly justifies the very, yeah, uh, very significant effort that our faculties and staff and administrative staff have to go to to support it. Next one. Um, this shows on the right the new campus. It's a purpose-built campus for Monash University standalone rather than uh, the back of this building, which was um, the uh, Sunway University College building, and Monash University was at the back. So the separate identity is really important, and it's just a wonderful new campus, very inspiring. Monash South Africa is growing rapidly also. Uh, three years ago, it had 400 students. It now has 1,500 students, or will have by mid-semester. Uh, they come all up from all over Southern Africa. 75% of the students are black and they're going to be the leaders of the Southern African countries and they're just uh, inspirational students. The potential benefits again are around what it can do in terms of the experience of our students uh, from all campuses. It's also embedding Monash and Australia in a country which, well, a continent which is exciting and culturally diverse. We all know it has huge problems but also has enormous potential. And in 20 or 30 years' time, Africa could be the China or India of the continent. And for Australia to be embedded in the way that we're becoming embedded will be of huge benefit to Australia. The previous High Commissioner there, uh, Ian Wilcock, described Monash South Africa as the most significant thing Australia was doing in Africa. Now, it's got a long way to go, of course, before it achieves all the uh, potential uh, but uh, it's making huge uh, advances in that way. So we think we can be a major partner in the realisation of the potential of Africa and the types of links we now have to Southeast Asia built through education can also happen with respect to Africa. And of course it's consistent with our social justice objectives, um, but it's uh, broader than that. This just shows the campus, this is the administration buildings, but they're now a wonderful series of buildings, uh, including a new library and uh, learning, no, learning commons and campus centre, which was opened uh, early in the year. Uh, wonderful residential facilities and educational facilities, and, and the students just love it and very, very uh, grateful.